That's right, and you're about to see them in action in broad daylight. You'll also hear from a lawmaker and a cop who say it's time to tighten the screws on scrapyards that are buying stolen metal. The man pushing the shopping cart isn't headed to the grocery store. He's a professional metal thief. He makes a living stripping aluminum and copper from vacant homes. That's him on our undercover camera, ripping an aluminum window off a vacant house. Another day, another vacant home. Here he is on the roof, knocking aluminum siding off while his partner collects it and loads it into a shopping cart. Here's a different crew at work in the same neighborhood, taking down huge sections of chain link fence from a vacant school in broad daylight. They load the big rolls of fencing onto the roof of an SUV and head off to the scrapyard. This has become an epidemic in Detroit. They're kind of dismantling our city, aren't they? Completely dismantling, taking it apart bit by bit. The metal thefts you just witnessed happened in the neighborhood that State Representative Rashida Tlaib lives in and represents. Thieves have knocked out streetlights by stealing transformers. And when the community refurbished this playground for the kids, metal thieves moved in and stole huge sections of new fencing. We're suffering. I mean, we have no lights. Now we have no fence for our park. Every corner uh, you turn, there's, there's yet another house that's been a victim of scrap metal theft. And it's destroying our city. This 2009 study ranks Detroit number two in the nation for metal theft insurance claims. The study's author says metal theft is making the foreclosure problem worse and destroying neighborhoods. When you see these homes where they've had the aluminum siding uh, just ripped off the sides, you know, they look like uh, shaved cats. They're very forlorn. Who's going to buy a house next to that? You know, who's going to buy that house? The owner says this house was in move-in condition with a signed lease when the thieves moved in. He says it's been stripped three times now. It's beyond repair, and he's walking away. So you they're know, destroying his house while he's trying to fix it up. Absolutely. So as we fix it up, they take it out, they destroy it. Metal thieves are getting bolder by the day and finding new things to steal. You name it, you think about it, they're taken. Lieutenant Derek Hassan heads the Detroit Police Copper Theft Task Force. He says it's not just copper and aluminum anymore, they're also taking iron and steel. Hassan says emerging countries like China are gobbling up scrap, driving scrap prices up here and fueling the theft problem. So we're kind of stripping Detroit to build up our competitors in a way. I, 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 think, you're, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, you certainly can look at it that way, and I think there's some validity to that. Hessen's task force has had some success. In 2007, thefts of these huge AT&T phone cables were averaging one a day. Thieves were clipping them off poles, burning off insulation, and selling the tangled copper strands for big bucks. Every single night in the city, uh, there was a cable theft, and those cable thefts uh, cut power, telephone service, and internet service uh, to entire neighborhoods. Working with utilities and scrapyards, the task force cut phone cable thefts to almost nothing last year. But Hassan says there's still a long way to go, and he says the solution is to tighten regulations on scrapyards. Where there is no buyer, there's no seller. I can't put it any simpler. State Representative Tlaib has drafted a bill to increase regulation of the scrap business statewide. I really think that, you know, some of these industries, people, leaders in this industry need to step up and realize that this is a huge problem. They need to do something about it. The head of the Scrap Dealers Association in Michigan says they have stepped up and offered suggestions to fight theft. Yes, it is a problem. Yes. I'm not going to give you a crazy answer. It is a problem, and we're at the table to try and reduce this and stop it. Zero is the goal. But Tlaib expects strong opposition from the scrap industry, especially on a provision to ban cash transactions, something the police are pushing for. I think it'll hopefully kind of uh, suppress that quick fix, if you will, uh, with some of the stolen material. Remember the playground fencing, the school fencing, the aluminum siding and windows? It all ended up at this scrapyard, Southwest Metals on Fort Street. When these guys went in to sell their stolen siding, the seven action news investigators confronted them. You just stripped that house over on Senator, didn't you? No. We watched you do it. On Senator? Yeah. No, you got sir. pictures of you stripping the house. Wow. You don't own that house, do you? I didn't strip no house. We have pictures of you, dude. You were up on the roof. You were with this guy. After we walked in, the scrapyard refused to buy their stuff and sent them packing. The owner of Southwest Metals is no stranger to police. In November, court records show he was charged with three misdemeanors under current city and state laws for failing to keep records on metal purchases. Joe Fawaz pleaded not guilty. Representative Tlaib is expected to introduce her bill soon. The investigators will stay on this important story. Scott Lewis, 7 Action News.
It is. A few weeks back, we showed you this undercover video of thieves stealing siding from homes and stealing chain link fence in broad daylight. Now we're undercover again, exposing a large scale operation. And as a result of our call to police, this time some folks are headed to the pokey. Yes, I'm going to roll you over, okay? Yes, roll you over. This is the end result of our latest action news investigation into the metal theft epidemic in Detroit. A six pack of metal scrappers under arrest, matching stainless steel bracelets, Watch your head. a courtesy shuttle van, and a reservation for six at the Iron Bar Hotel. Four trucks and vans impounded by police, along with cutting torches and heavy chains. Tools of the trade they were using to dismantle this huge city owned building. It stretches for several blocks. The destruction is mind blowing. This is what happens when the scrappers move in. This used to be a magnificent industrial building. Look what's left. Nothing more than a mess for the taxpayers to clean up. So how did Detroit police wind up on the case? Let me rewind to the beginning. It all started with a phone call to the seven action news investigators from Bishop Jesse King. We've been living with this for two years. King lives right next door to this metal thieves paradise and he's tired of it. They've been working in that building day and night. You can hear steel falling at night. 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And it's not just this building. Drive around King's neighborhood and you see dozens of vacant homes stripped clean. King says it's high time someone put a stop to the pillaging of our city. The city and the courts need to come together and they need to penalize these people where they'll quit tearing up this city and give law enforcement some teeth to do their job. King asked the Action News investigators to get involved, hoping we'd bring down some serious heat. So we went undercover and caught the scrappers on camera. From street level, we watched this guy using a battery-powered saw strapped to a long pole. And from a rooftop perch, we saw a whole crew of guys working. First, they used a cutting torch to separate steel I-beams. Then they hooked up a chain. You can't see it in the shot, but the other end is hooked to a truck. I'd seen enough. It was time to make a phone call. Hi, Lieutenant. Yeah, it's Scott Lewis. I called Lieutenant Derek Hassan, who heads up the Detroit Police Metal Theft Task Force, and we set up a rendezvous spot. At the far end of the industrial complex, there's one area that's still occupied. It's home to a thriving millwright company that builds fixtures and cabinets for restaurants and shopping malls. Like Bishop King, these folks are at wit's end, and they say repeated calls to City Hall have gotten them nowhere. You know, that, that game where you call one person, they say, oh, it's not my department, call another person, it's not my department, call, and then you end up with a full circle all the way around, and then we get nowhere. You know, we pay our taxes to the city, too, and we pay a lot of money to the city in taxes, and so we expect a, uh, a fair return. And finally, they're going to get it. Lieutenant Hassan arrives with his metal theft team in tow. A worker at the Millwright Company briefs him on where and how the metal thieves are working. Do they got any heavy equipment? No, they use their trucks, cut through all the pipes and the rods, and they hook them up to their truck and yank them away with the chain. Are they here every day? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Hassan heads up to the roof with binoculars in hand. Once he gets the lay of the land and hears the scrappers at work, he and his officers move in to make their arrests. Are you surprised by all the damage these guys have done? Oh, very surprised. I mean, look at it back here. I mean, um, it's a wreck. One of the arrested scrappers tries to justify what they've done. And I got four babies at home, man, and not working. It's hard, man, and you know. But they won't get much sympathy from folks like Bishop King, who have seen their neighborhood turn into a festering eyesore. And they said, well, they don't have jobs. They, a lot of them haven't tried to get jobs. You know, keep on working, keep on doing something, and try to get yourself in a position to get a job. The day we caught the metal scrappers on tape, they were paid $650 cash for a single load of steel at an east side scrapyard. All six of the men arrested are facing felony charges. Hours after their arrest, neighbors saw a different crew inside the same building stealing metal. Neighbors want the city to tear the building down to put a stop to the problem, but many say the real solution for every neighborhood is a proposed law to tighten regulations on scrapyards that are buying the stolen metal. For more information on this legislation, go to WXYZ.com. Scott Lewis, 7 Action News. On behalf of our community, our organizations, our block club members, and more importantly, on behalf of the children that use this park, we want to thank you so much. For Folks in southwest Detroit gather to say thanks to Giles Crouch, a suburban contractor with a big heart, a guy who stepped forward to help without even being asked. He was moved by a recent Action News investigation into metal theft. 
Our undercover camera caught metal thieves in the act, stripping houses and stealing metal fences, turning this once proud area into an eyesore. They even targeted a symbol of pride and rebirth in the neighborhood, stealing chain-link fencing from the newly refurbished Weiss play lot. Giles Crouch, the owner of Sterling Fence in St. Clair Shores, saw our investigation and sent me an email offering to help. A few days later, his crew was on the scene, replacing 120 feet of missing decorative black chain link fence free of charge. It doesn't matter city, suburbs, I mean it's a park with kids. Um, and that's pretty much was the bottom line for me. Not only did the thieves tarnish a neighborhood jewel, they created a safety hazard for small kids. The park is on a busy street. It took the kids security. It might be to someone five bucks, but a life of a child when it runs under that fence, no, it's priceless. The theft was also a big psychological blow to the neighborhood. It was terrible. It made us feel defeated. Um, but I think Sterling Fence today really uh, brought a lot of hope to, to many of us here that works extremely hard to make our community safe and clean. And they had worked so hard to build this family-friendly oasis. This is what the Weiss play lot looked like two years ago, neglected, overgrown, and outdated. A nonprofit called Urban Neighborhood Initiatives raised 400000 in private grants to refurbish the park. They were so proud the day they cut the ribbon. Then to have thieves come in and strip the fencing was a real setback. They had no money to replace it. For somebody to come along uh, who doesn't even live here uh, to do this, it, it's really heartwarming to everybody. And it gives people courage to keep on plugging away, making the neighborhood better. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Giles Crouch got a plaque from the state legislature and a nice round of applause for his kindness. And the wrong done to this neighborhood by metal thieves has now been made right. Scott Lewis, 7 Action News.